Here's how you can create an FPS tracker in Scratch. These are super useful to detect instances where your project lags and also just as a nice thing to have for each one of your games. Here's how you can create a tracker in Scratch. FPS stands for frames per second and it's used to detect the frequency of screen refreshes. Let's say that I have a small oscillation script such as this for my project. To get the FPS counter, first you need to create a variable to store the same. Then perform the following operations. When the green flag is clicked, enter into a forever loop. Each time, set the FPS variable to be the rounded value of 1 divided by the timer. Finally, reset the timer. If you test the program, you should get the FPS counter running at around the 30 mark. So how does this work? Remember that the variable should measure the number of frames per second. In this loop though, we will pass by only a single frame as there's just one block. Also, since we're resetting the timer before each iteration, the number of seconds for that frame will just be the value of the timer. So just plugging these two values into that formula that we have, we get FPS is equal to 1 divided by the timer. This method is simple and it's pretty easy to include in your projects. But sometimes we cannot use this method because we are already using the timer somewhere else. For example, if you watched my first tips and tricks video, then you will know that the timer block can be used to create a stop sign detector. So this second method involves making an FPS counter without using the timer. Let's go over this from the start. It's easier if we create a block and you can call this FPS tracker. Add an input for the initial day and make sure you do not run without screen refresh. For the block definition, add a very strange looking wait 0 seconds. After this, like before, set the FPS variable to be the rounded value of 1 divided by 86400 multiplied by day since 2000 minus the initial day. And that's really it. When the green flag is clicked, add a forever loop and each time within this loop, just use this block with an input of days since 2000. And well, if you test the program, the FPS counter should work almost identically as before. So how really does this work? I'll go over the logic step by step. The days since 2000 block doesn't just store the integer value of the days that have passed. It also stores the exact decimal value. For example, if the time is 12 noon in the afternoon of 1st January 2000, this block will return a value of 0.5, not 0. In fact, this is accurate down to the milliseconds. You can see this block update itself constantly if you show it from the sensing category. You can think of this block as being a measurement of time with its unit being days. When we use this block and give the days since 2000 as an input, it stores the time before a frame is run in the initial day parameter. The wait 0 seconds block just forces Scratch to run a single frame. It's actually a super important part of this. After this wait, the subtraction of these two blocks will give the time that it took to run that single frame. But the unit of this is in days. Since we want the frames per second and not frames per day, we convert this unit to seconds. Basically, multiply by 86,400, which is the number of seconds in a day. This uses the exact same logic as before, and while it's slightly longer to code, it's actually even more accurate. 